Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Clément Cogitor. Hello, good evening. Hello. So welcome to Clément Cogitor. And uh, I want to, first of all, thank you, Clément, for uh, being with us tonight and for um, having accepted to be part of this um, online public program that uh, we have launched with the MUDAM uh, at the end of October. Tonight is our third appointment with you. And before starting our conversation, I would like just to give a brief introduction about your work. So Clément is the winner of the Marcel Duchamp Prize in uh, 2018 with um, Evil Eye, the film that we are presenting on our uh, Me Family platform. Uh, Clément covers in uh, his large numbers of films a different range of subjects as the perception of reality, the primitivism, the survival of the sacred, the symbol of figures taken from apocalyptic stories. His work analyzes the relationship between humans and images, keeping as a main focus the value of the transcendent and the importance of belief in life. And I'm thinking now about two of your films. One is uh, ni le ciel ni la terre, neither heaven nor earth, where you are uh, documenting a military campaign of soldiers in Afghanistan. And at a certain point, mysteriously, suddenly, the soldiers disappear completely from the scene as if something supernatural happened beyond our imagination. And I'm also thinking about uh, Braguino, another film that is actually more a documentary where you are um, focusing your attention on the relationship between two families who are living in uh, the Braguino village in Siberia and they are living in a very bizarre way. They want to live independently from each other. They want to be separated. They even built a barrier in the village in order to keep distance from each other. So they are uh, kind of struggling between uh, different feelings in their lives. From one side, the fear of each other, but from the other side, we can say the joy of living in such a wonderful natural landscape. Um, this documentary has been declared uh, by Telerama as a crazy ambition, as a wonderful, rare masterpiece. Uh, and in one interview, you also declared your um, uh, film as a way to narrate about human beings' deepest fear. Now, I'm interested in knowing more about your consideration of human fears. Uh, you are also talking about fear in the evil eye. This word is coming back a few times in the film. What are today the deepest fears, Clément, you want to investigate, to ex explore? Um, first, of all, first of all, thanks a lot for, for this invitation. Very happy to be here uh, with you and the team of Mudam for, the, for this talk. And uh, um, concerning the, the, the fears, uh, first of all, I think that fiction and narratives, uh, exploring narratives is a way to, to cohabit with something that you don't really understand uh, from the world or from yourself and that can also create fears. And, and it's also a way to, to cohabitate with this, these, these fears. And um, I think the, the situation for me in my work and changed a lot the last two, three years, but I think the, the world changed so, so much and so quickly the last few years. So I think it's not, not anymore so much about which fears, but how to deal with those fears, how, how to go through those fears, how to face those fears. And that's, that's what I'm really uh, aware and what I'm really working on. Because I think that now in some way fears are everywhere, fears of disease, uh, fears of uh, ec ecological um, uh, collapse, of uh, solitude in, um, in this situation. And yeah, fear is, 
is growing in a way, not, maybe not for so long, but now it's it's not so much about which fears, but how to face it. I think uh, that I'm interested in, in like, to express that in my in my work or how to to deal with those fears. Yes, and I think we can definitely see your point of view in the um, evil eye. This is a, a film that uh, has been designed uh, specifically for the Marcel Duchamp Prize. Um, you draw inspiration from a US advertising uh, imagery. Uh, if I'm not wrong, you took the idea during a, a journey you made in, uh, in US where you have seen a child face used as a political advertising campaign. You then got the idea of the film, meaning that you decided to acquire the rights of all the images from the world most famous uh, images banks, such as uh, Get Your Shutterstock, which usually use these images uh, for a um, political or advertising purpose. And you completely decontextualize the images. You use the images in order to create your visual universe in a film format. Uh, and the main character of this uh, film is the figure of the woman. The woman is present as a, a child, as a young woman, as a grown up, as an adult. Even the, the names of the US tornadoes are actually women, and you are listing them, uh, listing them at the beginning of the film. You're referring, I think, to the cliche of the female figure who appears in some moments to be happy, to be smiling, and in some others to be really sad. A woman like Eve, we can say, that has been tempted and then she failed. And the woman is also present not only through the images, but also through a voice over who is, there is this voice who is reciting a plea that is actually written by yourself and I can say that it's like a kind of an apocalyptic verdict that is proclaiming the, the difficulties, the fears, the uh, obstacles that we are all facing in our life. Um, you are kind of uh, announcing uh, the end of a world that is addicted to consumerism and to materialism. Now, I would like to let you talk about the structure of this film and what is the message you want to transmit? Um, I don't think there is any like precise message, but um, at the very beginning, actu actually, I, I, I saw this picture when I was uh, in New York, but I saw one picture of a child. I saw, saw it twice in the same day. Uh, the first time was uh, on a packaging of, uh, I don't know, something in the grocery, something to eat, uh, you know? And there was a face of, uh, of a kid smiling. And uh, maybe a few hours later, I just recognized the same image of the same child um, on a big billboard. Uh, it was for the, 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 the Trump election in, in 2016. Okay. And I just had a like, kind of, uh, I just remarked that the, 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 the same kid, the same image was used in the, well, has been sold uh, by his parents some years ago. Um, and now this, this image is like a ghost that can uh, feel um, an emptiness in terms of, uh, in terms of for products, but also for an ideology. And uh, I just was wondering who, who are those faces, who are those bodies that are in this kind of catalog? And I just tried to, to, to look, to explore the, the, the database from Getty Shutterstock, which is mainly a big catalog of stereotypes and, and, and deja vu. You have this feeling that you know each image, you know each expression of the body, of the, of the, of the face, but you saw it already in the cinema, in the advertising. Or it's only images that you recognize and that's how it works because it, it, it uh, it call your your memory, our collective like Western memory mainly, but also from there are kind of section for for other part of the of the world. Um, but it's mainly a, a, a white Western um, imaginary. And uh, I was 
quickly over, overwhelmed by the presence of uh, of women and in the in the database of the, the the female body of the female faces, and it's such a cliche. It's it's from the very early ages of um, of advertising is that the, the body of the woman is uh, create more uh, uh, desire and 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 uh, uh, is uh, is better to sell something. Okay, so um, little by little I came that I had to 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 use these images not to, to sell something or, or to work on ideological purpose, but try to express kind of elliptic story related to those characters who are, who seem to me was haunting this, this place, mm -hmm. this, this database. And little by little, I was exploring this idea of the, 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 the female character in the, in the let's say, Judeo-Christian uh, uh, Western mythology. Um, from the Bible to to today, and one of the one of the things who really interests me is that in our mythologies, um, the evil come from the woman, the violence from the man, but the evil from the from the woman. And that's why, until a few years ago, the the, the names of the hurricane was only woman, maybe. And uh, a few, year, few years ago, maybe in 2015 or 16, they decided to share, the, you know, the, to make it yes. one, one female name and one male name. But before it was only woman, uh, female name for the, for the hurricanes. But I was really interested in this female figure from Eve to the witch, from the, the, the woman who bring the evil in the, in the community and which is a well, uh, which is a way to in French, we say le bouc émissaire, you know, the scapegoat. Like the, you, you, in the community, there is one element who, who is accused to 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 have brought the evil in the in the in the community. So little by little, I can through this kind of elliptic and experimental story and uh, trying to express things that were hidden in the images. Um, because maybe after fifteen years of working with video images, uh, editing, sound, uh, language. And I know I, I'm so much convic convicted that the, 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 you can, one image can express one thing and he's totally opposite, depending on the context. So it was about a lot of, about revealing something hidden in the, in the image by the context and by the editing, how the image dialogue uh, with the sound, uh, with the language and how, how, which energy and which emotion is um, is conducted in the in the shot at this uh, precise moment? So um, so it was like a like a laboratory with uh, with sound uh, words and and uh, and images. Thank you, Clement, for this uh, explanation. And it's interesting that you said uh, at the beginning that the image uh, um, of the child when we were talking about. The beginning is like a ghost of an ideology. And then now you said that, of course, what you want to express is trying to explore things that are hidden in the images. We are actually living now in a, in a, in a generation, in an era where we are completely bombarded by images, by news, by information. Everything must be connected uh, the, uh, in the quickest possible time. But sometimes for us, it's also difficult to um, distinguish uh, what is real from what is fiction, from what is invention. So we are definitely living in a stereotype society. And uh, I would like to know, what do you think about this debate between reality and fiction, reality and artificiality, real and fake? Um, a lot of my work is focused on this very, very tiny line in between. We don't know really if is it about facts or is it about fiction or is it something real or something that we are dreaming. And uh, I think our our brain, our spirit is a is a mechanism um, who is always produce, producing fiction. Like uh, if we think about our childhood, I think half of our memory of what we think 
about our childhood is a, is a fiction we created ourselves or people told, thing, told us things about our childhood. And little by little, it's a big mixture between some things that really happened and some things that we think that happened those ways, but we, we probably uh, build up some, some memories, you know? And uh, I think we, our, our lives is in this process is until our death is, is still uh, acting, you know? And uh, fiction in, uh, in some way in literature, theater, art and uh, opera, cinema is a way to to, to question how uh, this use of fiction and how uh, there's a, um, maybe two extreme, like the first one is poetry and the other one is lying, and, you know, and fiction can be in this, in, in between these two, two extremes. But um, no, the, the situation has been so, is now so much complicated with, uh, because this, the presence of fiction has now totally connected to science, to journalism, to mm. ideology, to political, that it's, in a way, it's it's so much difficult to, it's not anymore play or it's anymore um, a metaphysical question to explore on stage or in our books or in our screens. It's it's about uh, not being lost in, uh, in what we think uh, is the reality when this reality is building our community. You know, and I think that a community starts when people are telling themselves the same stories. And, uh, but what about when those stories are dangerous lines or dangerous mm -hmm. fiction? So um, these borders is, is not really clear and won't never be really clear. But what strikes me so much now, it's how uh, it's unclear in so many levels, in so many fields, in, of our lives and, and especially in the political and scientific uh, fields. Thank you, Clément. Um, now I just want to ask you a last question because I think we're running almost uh, out of time about another amazing project you have made, Les Anne Galants, the Amorous Indies, that is a short film. It, it was born as a short film. Um, as a readaptation of a, an opera ballet by um, Jean-Philippe Rameau from 1753. And then you uh, readapt this music, uh, putting it in dialogue with um, modern dancer, uh, cramp dancers, break dancers, hip hop dancers, and you create this very intense dialogue between uh, the strength of the dance and the spiritualism of the music. Uh, you had also the opportunity to present this uh, uh, project as a real performance, as a show at the Opera in Paris. And uh, I just would like to ask you a little bit more about this amazing project, which is a little different from the Evil Eye. Um. Yes, both projects, I mean, the video and the, the, the opera stage production was produced and commissioned by, by Opera, opera Nationale de, de, de Paris. And at the beginning, it's a part of the um, uh, Troisième Scène, Third Scene video collection, which is a kind of carte blanche that Opera de Paris gives to visual artists, filmmakers, writers, in order to, to, to direct um, a short video re related in some way to the opera world. And uh, when uh, Philippe Martin, the artistic director, uh, asked me to, to do something for this collection, I immediately thought about one idea I had in mind since a uh, um, few years, and I was just waiting for the opportunity to, 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 to direct it. And it was this famous, very famous piece in the Baroque French um, uh, music, um, which is very, very known, and I was, listening to this music that I, I really love, I was hearing some deep tension and deep forces that could maybe welcome or invite some other um, dancing uh, energies and bodies and personality that it's usually made for, you know, because it's part of, of an opera ballet, so it, it's made for dancers and uh, singers and dancers on, on stage. And I was um, wondering, which, what kind of dancers I could I could invite uh, from that and uh, and making research I, I discovered 
cramp. And I immediately uh, recognize uh, in the movement, the tension I, I, I saw in my mind when I was listening to the music. And so um, in some way, um, I think that staging uh, is, is a way to set up meetings between elements, uh, landscapes, bodies, uh, faces, and the music, and to bring them together and, and to, 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 to film or, or to, 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 yeah, to film this, uh, this meeting. And um, so we shot one day at the, at the, on the stage of Opera Paris. And, uh, and me, the dancers, the choreographers, we immediately felt something strong happening between all of us and the music. And uh, that there was something revealed from the music with the, their dancing and with the, the rhythm and uh, yes. And um, yeah, and then few, few days after I finished the, the video, I showed to, to the um, director of uh, Opera de Paris, Stéphane Misner. Which is the first uh, first audience for, for 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 the video before they are they are screened or launched or yeah. and um, and then in, invited me to 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 stage the whole um, the whole production the whole piece of the opera which is not six minutes as the, the first um, mm -hmm. video I made but three hours of of um, of opera with singers chorus and of course uh, dancers and um, to work on this piece with which is a very problematic political piece uh, coming from the enlightenment but also um, colonialism um, uh, uh, from the yeah French colonialism at, at this moment and uh, so it was also a way to understand and to work more deeply on what kind of tension was uh, in this piece and uh, because the tension in the crumb music are really strong and come from uh, a political um, conflict in, in USA uh, after the, 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 the aggression of Wodna King by the police and in the riots in, in LA, uh, I think it's 90, 1992. And, and then little kids and teenagers and young adults start to dance to express the, the, the political violence and tension they, 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 they felt. And so it's all those tension are about a political, uh, 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 political tension and, um, and the whole work was about to dialogue with history, with ideology, and with this hidden tension um, in the music, and to express it, to reveal it uh, with, um, with the body. Thank you, Clement. I, I wish I could see it actually <laughs> in Paris. Uh, I really want to thank you for this uh, amazing talk. I would like to also conclude then underlining the beauty of your films, of your project, where we are completely hypnotized by your images, by the power of your narration. You are able to create, I can say, a new immersive visual universe where images uh, generate the model and the model generates the images. And it's uh, the question that arises from your images, I can say it's not a question of confrontation, but more of an encounter. From the image, you originate a language and our faculty of imagination. And our mind is completely floating in your visual immersive language, guiding us towards a new reality that we can explore both with our eyes and with our mind. And I invite at this point the public who is listening to us to immerse themselves to, into your universe and to be kind of included in your vision and in your world. So thank you, Clement, very much. Thank, thank you, you so everyone much. for listening. And uh, I wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.